Hello everybody and today we're going to do a video about the Necron Tomb Blade. How to use these effectively, how to get the most out of them and um, some basic tactics. How to make them very annoying for your opponent. Let's go over the power of the Tomb Blades. Toughness 5 and Toughness 6 is a very very nice place to be. But in all my games, out of all my units, the only units I pretty much get reanimation on is Tomb Blades. Everything else just dies in a round of shooting. These are the only units I can rely on to have a reanimation role. And these, you, these Tomb Blades have won me so many games. I played this one game, I had one left twice in one game, and he went, went hidden building and reanimated and came out and did damage. Very good. So the main power, you actually get to use reanimation with these, simply because they are toughness 5, and another massive, massive bonus is they are minus 1 to hit. That minus 1 to hit is so powerful in the tradition right now. Because the rerolls happen after the modif uh, before the modifiers. So if you hit enough threes with a reroll, threes you can't reroll. So these are much harder to kill for Gurleyman armies and Imperium in general because they reroll everything. And another main advantage of the Tomb Blades is they have incredibly, incredibly fast. 14 inch movement is insane for us, and it's basically the only reliable we unit we have that can go out and grab objectives. Okay, let's go to tactics how to use these. The particle beamer is a shelf 6 HP nothing. The only time I would recommend you use that if you run your tomb blades with no upgrades. You just want to spam as many tomb blades as possible. And if I had to, I'd use the strategy between all cover. Very powerful for killing toughness 5 or less units. The particle beamer is only good, is only better than the Tesla and the Gauss if you're shooting a toughness 5 or toughness 3. Anything higher is the same. The Gauss Blaster? I find the Gauss Blaster is very good in Tomb Blades if their goal is to go out and grab objectives and be a point scoring unit. That minus 2 AP is amazing. And depending on what dynasty you put them in, you can have a minus 3 AP in rapid fire. But my favourite weapon options right now is the Tesla Carbine. The reason I love the Tesla Carbine Tomb Blade is simply because the Overwatch is absolutely insane. Don't ever rely on Overwatch to kill anything. But it's nice to know that it's, it's coming at you, you have no way of stopping it. You have a good chance to do some damage with these. The upgrades for the Gauss Blaster. I would run with a free up armor, and I also give him the ignores cover save, simply because his job's got to get objectives, so he's guaranteed to be fighting people in buildings, and you want a minus two on those units. So you don't want to be like using power points to try and shoot off something stupid on an objective, like scouts. You get two plus armor save for being in cover, ignores cover. So goodbye scouts. Make short work of. For the tears the carbine, I also give him the free up armor. And I would also give him Ingdor's cover. The reason I give him Ingdor's cover is Tezza's weakness is 2 up. If you ever go up against 2 up armor with Tezza, you're in for a hard game. So that Ingdor's cover stops any 3 up armor normal units from getting 2 up safe with touching cover. There's nothing worse than a 5, guy, a five guys just touching terrain and a 2 up and you can't kill them. So that might that ignores cover, in my opinion, is far superior than the other options you have. Okay, let's talk dynasties with the Tomb Blades. One of the greatest strengths with the Tomb Blades is they basically can go in any dynasty and have a good benefit from it. Unlike other units, most units need a specific dynasty to make them good. Like the Doomsday Arc, you need to be in South Tech so you can move and shoot without the penalty or you, you won't be able to, able to reroll ones. It's, you're basically locked into those two dynasties. With these, you can run them in any dynasty, and they're very effective no matter what you pick. But the top two I'll pick with these is the Nefric dynasty. So you have the ability to move 14 inches, and you automatically get a six in your advance roll. That is a very powerful dynasty for these, because the 20 inch movement is game changing. So many times I've had one Tomb Blade left, I've used my 20 inch move, I've hit out with line of sight, and two turns later I come out with seven Tomb Blades. It can save your unit of Tomb Blades so easily. Another good dynasty is the South Tech dynasty. 
and you need extra firepower. You can give these plus one hits, the Tesla guns will actually go off on a five plus. Okay, so that's the main reason why I like Tomb Blades, is they're very hard to kill and you don't have to be locked into a dinosaur you don't want to be locked into. So let's go on to tactics now. Okay, this is a basic setup now. We've got a nice little bit of terrain everywhere. Yeah, lots of line of sight block and terrain, which you should have in every game, especially now in 8th edition. This is the main uh, strength of the Tomb Blades. You want to have five out of cover, stay in your point in the face, saying shoot me. And then I have three in the building, you can't see, with a crypt deck. I also have one in this building here, holding an objective. Just for the sake of holding an objective. Okay. So what you want to do now, you want to have all your troops, etc. Anything that's easy to kill, our line of sight, turn one. You need to have first turn. It's best to be out line of sight and then move to where you need to be and shoot. Just in case you have to use the initiative. Okay, never, ever expect to get first turn. Okay, always expect to go second. And if you get first turn, great. Do your alpha strike and cripple your opponent as much as possible. So hide these or put them in cover at least. So these guys will be holding the objective until my opponent comes after it. Out of line of sight or majority out of line of sight. All your main heavy hitters that you want to be killing stuff, like the destroyers, keep these in deep strike if you can, or our line of sight. Okay, you can probably fit them in there if you had squeeze or over here. They should fit in here in the form, if you can't see too well. There you go. Okay. So the reason we do this is because you want your opponent to waste all his shots on these. If you can't see any high value targets, because everything's out of line of sight or in deep strike reserve, he basically has to pick from, do I use my long range firepower to kill five measly immortals or do I wipe these tomb blades out? And if you play the game correctly, and if you do a good job hiding your units, this could be the only unit you can actually shoot at, and scarabs. So by doing this, let's say if your opponent has three riptides, he shoots at these, you can easily kill like four in one round of shooting, like so. And then the next trip type will kill, shoot at this one, kill another three. You take this one, this one. And then, this is where the magic happens, right? You take one of these guys over here. Take the middle one so I can reanimate better. Right, now his third rip tide can't shoot him. I got two left in there. And this is what makes Tomb Blades so, so powerful. Because they're so hard to whittle down like this. And if you can make your opponent burn his first Alpha Strike turn of killing units on the Tomb Blades, you're in a very good place. Because you use two Riptides now, you destroy the Tomb Blades, but they can't finish them off because you can't see them. You may have like outline of sight weapons, but there's a good chance he'll survive. And you also got command points if you need them for armor saves. And because they're in cover now, they got two up. Much harder to kill. But this is why I love them, see? So once your opponent's fight all his heavy weapons to these, he's like, oh crap, I can't shoot those. He'll shoot your malls or whatever, whatever's available. Because you're in range of a crypt deck, you get a four plus three animation. And depending on when he, how much of a loss you took, you might want to just hang back and reanimate a bit, reanimate a bit more. So you get three back. Five's not bad to go out and cause trouble for turn one. But preferably you want more. But you never know, reanimation's very random. On the 4+, plus, you get half and back on average. You can always use your command points to increase your odds of reanimation, but I don't think it's worth it. So turn 1, your opponent will spend around 2,000 points shooting at your Tomb Blades, uh, whatever little scarabs or stuff you have in line of sight. So your losses will be cut down to a minimum. Then you get your reanimation, so you get half back, so you get three back just to be safe, to keep it fair. So you have five Tomb Blades now. They are extremely fast, and depending on what dynasty you're in, you can provide them for 14 inches or 20 inches, no problem. So you can bring them out like so. I would always advance the Crypt Deck, but if you're in Africa, you don't need to, because you have auto six, so you'll always be able to keep up with the Tomb Blades. And then you can bring out the big guns. Ugh. And these are what your opponent wants to kill. These will be your opponent's target number one. 
the destroyers. So that 300 points there has stopped your opponent wiping out an important unit turn one. And also a good screen for these. And now that these are out, they will use their command points, their straw jumps, destroy wherever they shoot at, most of the time. And then your opponent will be like, do I want to kill? I'll try and finish these off because it takes two riptides minimum to kill them. I don't want to wipe these out because these are nasty. And that is where their power comes in because these are really difficult to kill. These are not that hard to kill, believe it or not. Especially with those new baby knights and stuff. You know when P-Women like, they always get flat free damage and stuff, no problem. And another good tip, if you use the Nefric Dynasty, they don't need the Canoptic Cloak either, you can just run the normal Cryptek instead. And you can give them the Chromatorion, so you'll have basically Fly, because he has 6 inch automatic move, and he can give his 5 up invent to these. So depending on what Dynasty you have, both Cryptek's are also good. But the best part of these now, they're with half strength, you've only lost 150 points roughly. <laughs> So your opponent's first turn he's killed 150 points of models. So his next turn then he's, he's probably going to kill the destroyers. I will kill the destroyers. So you have another reanimation turn. And then these are the perfect objective grabbers. And the more he shoots at these the better. If you do lose a unit of Tomb Blades turn 2, it's not that big a deal if you think about it. Get 300 points in 2 turns is a good trade off to stop everything else from dying. And let's not forget the ability of, of a screen. Tezza Tomb Blades are absolutely lethal in Overwatch because they have so many shots. So if you go up against a melee heavy army, you might want to put your scallops in front and the Tomb Blades behind. And then move them up the board like so. So after you're on turn 2, you want to be in the middle of the board with your Tomb Blades. Just, for you have, just because you have the option then to run off and grab objectives. And let's not forget you have Doomsday Arcs, your long range weapons shooting, you have your Tesla Immortals shooting, you'll have whatever you use in your army, cause a mayhem. Okay, another really good use for these is don't be afraid to assault units. Obviously don't assault like Thunder Hammer Terminators and stuff like that. But I think it's like this. They're perfect to assault the Hive Tyrants. And you're like, what the hell do you want? You, you know, why the hell would you assault our Tomb Blades? If this thing falls back, it can't charge you. And it has fly. And how many stacks this thing got? Like five or six? So at the very most, you can kill five Tomb Blades. And if you have one or five, it doesn't, it's a big deal. You can assault this thing. Just to keep these guys alive. Because next turn, this is going to destroy these. So just, I'll oh, be very wary. The minus one to hit is not in combat, only shooting. But if you do assault something, make sure the Cryptek is nearby. And you take... Like so. So if you lose three from this high of time, you go lucky. Take them like this, right? Take one there. Say so one there. Take this one. Okay. And that way you got much more space to reanimate. You can get at least six of there. Maybe seven. Two blades. If you take them all from the one side, you just crumped up here. So if I did this, I took them all from the side like that. I mean, reanimation where I can get one there. Maybe one there, and um, one there, so I can get three max. So if you're in the combat with Tomb Blades, take them, make sure you got a gap, and then you can reanimate to fill the gaps. But then fall back, then to your unit coherency, and then shoot the, two, the Hive Tyrant. This is an emergency manoeuvre, right? You don't actually want to plan to do this, but if it's between Destroyers and Tomb Blades, send in the Tomb Blades to die. You want to think of Tomb Blades as mosquitoes. It's just there, bugging the crap out of you and you want to kill it. If your opponent ignores these completely, perfect, because they hit extremely hard. But their main goal is keeping your, uh, your army alive and making your opponent burn their firepower. You want to keep these moving up the field every turn. You want them in your opponent's face and you want them shooting. And if you can, assault a tank with also stop a shooting. Absolutely brilliant. There's nothing worse than just having all those tanks at the back of the field Imperial Guard fly over everybody and just assault the tanks. It's absolutely brilliant. <laughs> you know? Of course these can't kill a tank in combat, but 300 points. If you can stop six, 700 points of shooting the tanks for one turn, they've paid for themselves already. So these are the basics of the Tomb Blades. The Gauss, that's the Tesla option as a screen. 
The Gauss Tomb Lids, you basically do not want the destroyers near them. The Gauss t uh, Tomb Lids can be used in the same way, obviously. But the main difference is they have a minus two weapon and they have rapid fire. So you basically don't want them guarding destroyers. You want them to be go up the side of the board. I like to use them on the side of the board. See that objective on top of that building there? What I would do, I would start them in the outline of sight, have four or five out so they can get shot at, turn one. Heal by crypt deck, and then you want to go up the side of the board, like so, and just cause as much problems as you possibly can. And they have 14 inch movement, so they should be in rapid fire turn one if you want them to be. Okay. But doing this, if you have one on each side of the board moving up, the opponent has the op is forced to deal with them. Okay, so let's use turn one. You come up the side of the board, you're causing problems shooting. Let's say you run a two, two units of gout, you have another unit up the other side. Their main goal is to cause as much trouble as possible and shoot your opponent off objectives. The turn one in there, maybe I'll just lose. Could I annoy my opponent too much? Say I'll lose that many. I'll use my command points to pass morale, or even if I lose more but one, like so, because I really annoy my opponent, there's just one left. So use my two command points to pass morale, and then I will do this. I'll fly out a line of sight on my turn. Pretend I got really unlucky and I won back on my animation and hide. And then they'll just stay there and regenerate. But that's 300 points of eating your opponent's fire, causing problems, and they'll grab the objective when I need it. Once they get up to around six, six or seven Tomb Blades, I'll bring them back out and I'll just repeat. Okay. Don't ever be afraid to just come up in the middle of the board like so and say, eat it. That is their strength. So Gauss Tomb Blades are basically your, your objective, grab a Tomb Blades. To go up the board, grab objectives, shoot off the squishy units like the Scouts or anything that's got a really weak armor save like Space Marines. You know, the five up saving cover is really good. And if you if you use the Method Dynasty, it's a six up saving in cover, rapid fire. And rapid fire Gauss is still very dangerous in Overwatch as well. Never underestimate the Overwatch for Tomb Blades, simply because they have so many guns. Uh, let's go on to the Particle Beamer. The Particle Beamer is basically not as good as it was in the Index. In the Index, it was good because things like this was tough in the six. But most monstrous creatures now, like the Riptides, are toughness 7. So they've lost a lot of their killing power thanks to the Codexes. So basically, the best way to run Particle Beamers, if you have them, is just keep them bare bones, maybe give them Ignore's cover, and go after scouts and clear up the objectives. Just get up there. And if you can, assault a tank with them, because they're just cheap and doesn't matter if they die. So... That is my opinion on the Tomb Blades, and I hope you all enjoyed. My favourite dynasty for these is the Auto Pass 6 inch advanced move. The Sautex okay with these, not preferably because I don't really need that plus 1 to hit for them. I don't like using command points that much. And the minus 1 AP. So they're the best dynasties I would say for the Tomb Blades. But like I said earlier, their strength is they'll go in any dynasty and they'll kick butt. That's why I like them so much. Also, the best HQ is the only one that can buff them is the Crypt deck. I would use the Coptic Cloak unless you're in, unless you're using Destroyers and you want that 5 in run in the Death dynasty. So thank you all for watching and I'll catch you all again in the next video.